Welcome back, everyone, to the Paige Cornblue Show. Paige Cornblue here with Scott Spradling. This is the Cornblue countdown to the ballot, Scott. Just a few days left to go, Paige. <laughs> and for most of us, I think we're like, oh, Lord, just let it be done. <laughs> uh, yes, we're almost there. Um, Scott is a political expert. He has been for decades um, of the Spradling group. We worked together for many years during our time at WMUR. Scott was there a little bit longer than my journey and path um, at MUR, but always our political analyst, always our political expert, and still to this day, the best guy to break it all down for us, no matter how informed we think we are about politics. Thank you, Paige. You're so welcome. And, you know, I am I am obviously in my car because life is busy, right? right. And there are so many of us who are, super informed who follow all of the newscasts, whether, you know, no matter where you lean, there's the so-so informed. And then there's the, I don't have a minute to follow or I don't have an interest, but I know I'm going to vote for them in this presidential race of all things. <laughs> and so just hoping to help those folks out in the next few days, if they have a minute while they're on a walk or in their car to just get a quick uh, synopsis. So okay. you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> days to go, tensions at an all time high, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very high tension right now. I think what you have at the moment is you have a lot of passion on both sides of this presidential election. And those who really, really support Donald Trump are nervous and anxious that maybe Kamala Harris can win. And same with the supporters for Kamala Harris, who are very nervous that maybe Donald Trump might win. And Paige, right smack in the middle of it is a whole series of national and state by state polls that are really showing this race is too close to call. If there was a lean at all, if you're looking at that needle to just try to figure out who's winning this thing right now with just a few days left, um, it looks like Donald Trump has the narrowest of margin of leads. But there's only a handful of states that are ultimately going to decide the outcome of this election and all of the polls in all of those seven battleground states are within one or two points. So it's really too close to call. And the pendulum has been swinging, right? I mean, it has. Couple, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, each election's critical. We all know that local, national, but what sticks out about this one? I think what sticks out about this one is just the somewhat historic nature of how we got here, Paige. Just a few months ago, it was Trump versus Joe Biden for re-election. Now we have the vice president who has done basically in 60 to 70 days what most candidates take two years to have to do. And so we are at, at a, a somewhat historic moment. And so what it's turned into is an election of a sitting vice president that kind of not a lot of people really know a ton about. I mean, yes, we know Kamala Harris is our vice president, but who really knows who she is and what makes her tick and what her background is. So there's uncertainty around the incumbent, if you will, versus the we absolutely know what we're going to get with Donald Trump on the Republican side of the aisle. And so what you have is um, a, a very narrow slice of people that are left maybe undecided or whether or not they're going to vote. And that group looks like they're going to determine the outcome of this election because pound for pound, page, it looks like the number of Republicans supporting Donald Trump and the number of Democrats supporting Kamala Harris is about the same. Why is this one specifically so close? So I think it's close for a few different reasons. One, Donald Trump is now a known commodity former president running essentially for his second term, skipping one with Joe Biden in between. And there is among some that sense of uh, what are we going to get with a Donald Trump presidency and some anxiety around that among people that don't favor him versus the absolute enthusiasm for those who do. And you flip that against the kind of the unknown commodity of Kamala Harris, who with just a couple days left, Paige, is still trying to make closing arguments, not necessarily why not Donald Trump. I think a lot of people are waiting for her to explain, why me? Why Kamala? What, a, what kind of president am I going to be? How am I going to lead? How am I going to make decisions? And that sort of novelty and not knowing who she is and what makes her tick, I think has created this level of uncertainty this late in the election. Um, you know, overall, I would say, like, what do people need to do between now and, you know, Tuesday, um, if there's some question? 
Yeah, that's a and that's a great question because I really do think that despite how people feel about either candidate, there are plenty of undecided voters. Like you said, that third category of people that, hey, I don't pay attention. I got better things to do. I got a life to lead. I'll I'll vote, but I'll pay attention in the last weekend. So if this question is really geared for them, I would simply say, do yourself the favor of not just watching a few newscasts and reading a few online articles this weekend because there has been a lot said by both candidates about issues and uh, about how they will lead that that really should be a part of the factor of how you're going to decide. If you're truly undecided, do yourself a favor. Take just a little bit of time. Pick those issues that kind of mean something to you like, hey, the economy and finances mean a lot to me or I'm really focused on what's going on in the Middle East and just go in and do a little bit of Googling and find out what the candidates are saying about how they will lead on those major issues and don't just rely on the last few days and few hours of election coverage because I think you're shortchanging yourself. What are the candidates talking about now that we should listen to? So right now, both of them are, well, if they're following any script, which I mean, really, these two are not following any script, but if they're following the typical script <laughs> with a yeah. couple of days left, it's closing argument time. They are trying to reach out to those final groups of voters that they feel they might be able to sway into their favor in order to get through this election and actually win. Um, Donald Trump doesn't really need to speak to his base anymore. Um, but what he is trying to do is, for example, he's spending a lot of time in towns and smaller suburbs around big cities in battleground states like Allentown, Pennsylvania, because he's hoping that the rural vote in these battleground states will turn out big time for him, that he can stoke up the enthusiasm and get good numbers and actually win those states against the larger community and cities that tend to lean uh, somewhat towards Kamala Harris. So where they are speaking talks a lot about who they're speaking to. And they're also really trying hard to reach out to the pockets of voters they think they need right now. So for example, Kamala Harris really speaking a lot to women voters. The perception is she's leading among women. She's talking to women a lot more. Um, Donald Trump, on the flip side, is leading among men, and he's talking to um, male voters more, and especially young voters. So it's an interesting conversation, and, and people might find that it resonates with them because he's talking to you, trying to get you to get out and vote. And we often hear him on social media now these days, right? These um, it's not just the political ads on TV. It's not just the newspaper articles and, you know, interviews that we're seeing old school wise. And all, of course, in all of our mailboxes, all the flyers, right? They're coming <laughs> at us like no other, I feel like this season. But uh, social media, it's a whole new ball game, And so many people, that's how they're getting their clips, right? How yeah. is that playing? You know, how are you how are you explaining that one? So it's really something, um, you know, social media has sort of sped up the appetite and sped up the speed in which we absorb information, right? Now everything is in a, a 15 second TikTok video, right? With mm -hmm. maybe a link. And that has uh, made it both easier and more challenging for candidates to get their message out there. It's quick to get a message. It's efficient. You can get right to people that you're trying to target. So those are all benefits. Um, the downside is Everything gets boiled down to a, maybe a 15 second soundbite and doesn't necessarily give you all the information you might need. Mm -hmm. So again, I would go back to, it's totally fine to be pacing through and seeing what's happening on social media and what the candidates are saying and, and how they're spending their final hours. But it also is important to note the source of some of the videos, whether, I mean, whether you're getting it from TikTok, whether you are perusing Facebook or Instagram, wherever you're getting your information, just pay attention to the source of information because it could be Fred down the street who's already made up his mind and is using information that isn't vetted to try to convince you to vote one way or the other. Or it could be a notable news outlet that you trust that is giving you information that you can count on is accurate. I think, Paige, one of the things we're starting to see, and I don't know if you're seeing in Florida, but we actually had a lawsuit around it in, uh, in New Hampshire around the presidential primary with a mm -hmm. fake, an AI video that was turned into an audio tape that turned into robocalls to voters in New Hampshire, faking as Joe Biden, telling them not to vote. And 
it um, it resulted in a court case. They tracked the guy down. He was from out of state and he's facing serious fines and was found guilty recently. So there are some concerns that AI and and um, and even honestly, foreign countries are pushing information into the pipeline that isn't accurate. So I, I don't say that to scare people, Paige. I just say it to make sure that folks know the source of their information, because um, there are some dastardly folks out there that are trying to sway minds with misinformation. How about local issues and, um, you you know, weaving in here and impacting kind of our our presidential race? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, you know, it's it's funny. Some states are going to have their local races uh, dictated by the presidential race because so many people will turn out every four years in a presidential election, but they don't show up for those um, those in between years. And so with more people comes um, maybe a a different outcome than what you might normally see. So for example, there are some states where the presidential race is going to draw a whole bunch of new people into it, and it could affect a governor's race or a U.S. Senate race, congressional, or even state house races in each state. There are also ballot measures in a number of different states, some that pertain to the economy and taxes, some that pertain to abortion policy. Those are drivers for individual voters in individual states. Those issues could very well impact outcomes of the presidential election because the local issue is so important. So all all of that is to say, Paige, that from state to state, all politics truly is local and you have some interesting and unique impacts. And I'll say it this way. In New Hampshire right now, um, one of the most competitive states in the country is the race for governor here in New Hampshire. And we're watching that race, which is neck and neck between the Republican and the Democrat. And one of the things we're all watching is the impact of the presidential race outcome just in New Hampshire, where right now up here, Kamala Harris leads by a few points in the polls. And the argument here is if she does way better than that, if the polls are wrong, then the Democrat who's running for governor is probably going to win. But if the polls are accurate, then the Republican is probably going to win. So it all ends up being mixed in together and and national races can affect the local and vice versa. Real quick to list off what states are going to be are going to be uh, all eyes on in the next few days and, sure. and all, well on election day. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got seven Paige. We're watching okay. seven. And my favorite three are the Rust Belt states of Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. But there are four others that we're all keeping an eye on. On the East Coast, North Carolina and Georgia are in play. We all remember what happened in Georgia where Joe Biden beat Donald Trump, a Democrat beating Republican in, in that state for president was uh, is historic. In North Carolina, again, to your last question, the governor's race has turned sideways because of some political controversy around the Republican who's running for governor there. And now the Democrat is doing very well and surging. And so North Carolina is actually in play for the presidential race because the Democrat is doing so well in the governor's race, it might pull votes towards Kamala Harris. North Carolina has traditionally been a bit of a red state, leaning a little more purple. Sometimes Dems might have a better chance. So those two states. And then the last two are Arizona and Nevada, where polls are showing that on any given day, either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump are leading by about a point. So you've got two West Coast states and four East Coast states that are essentially uh, five East Coast states that are going to essentially decide this thing. Anything else I'm forgetting that's important? No, just get out to vote. November 5th is the day. And whether you are in Florida or you're in Iowa or in my home state of New Hampshire, just get out there and make sure your voice is heard. You will sleep better on Tuesday night if you have at least cast a ballot and you've participated participated in the process. And I guess I'll say this as a final thought page. I think we should be prepared, emotionally prepared for the possibility that we're not going to have a result on Tuesday night in the presidential election. If the polls are right and these races in these battleground states are this close, they may not have results by the end of the night. In fact, it may take a day or two to find out what these battleground states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania have even done. So um, while we all want it to be over on Tuesday night, It is entirely possible. It'll be a few days before we really can name a winner because it's so close. So earn that sticker and be patient. (laughs) Amen, sister. That's exactly right. (laughs) Scott Spradling, political expert uh, from the Spradling Group. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, it's fun to be a part of the Corn Boot Countdown. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anytime <laughs> i appreciate you and i'll put all uh, your information and uh, details here on my website pagecornblue.com 
But thank you, Scott. And Thanks, Paige. Until next time, everybody. Cheers. 